Hello everyone, I'm a rank 1 3300 XP Windwalker and I'll be doing an in-depth Shadowlands guide on how to play Windwalker. I'll be going over your gear, talents, macros, add-ons, covenant choice, soulbind path plus the conduits, your legendary and how to use it, and at the end I'll be covering some higher level gameplay mechanics of Windwalker. I stream live on Twitch as well, link will be in the description, so if you have any questions feel free to stop by and I'll be sure to answer them. I also run viewer games so you can play with me and I can teach you in arenas on stream as well. Let's get it. Alright, so for talents on Windwalker, you're going to be wanting to run with Chi Wave, Tiger's Lust, Ascension, Ring of Peace, Diffuse Magic, Dance of GG and Whirling Dragon Punch. So for your 15 talent tree, Chi Wave is your best option. Chi Burst has double the cooldown of Chi Wave. It doesn't do very much damage or healing, and it has a one second cast time. I of the Tiger used to be really good in BFA sometimes versus double melee because you could easily keep it rolling on more than one target to increase the value you got of it. But now in Shadowlands, it's only a limit of one target. So Chi Wave is by far your best option. And you can also kill Siphons with it from ranged. Uh, you can't do that with Crackling Jade Lightning. I'm not sure why it can't kill Siphons, but it can't. And there's going to be a lot of Shadow Priests coming in Shadowlands. So uh, you want to run with Chi Wave. Next is Tiger's Lust. That's really good for getting out of Mage Novas and Shaman Earth Grabs and other roots, and you can also give it to your teammates to help them kite if you don't need the mobility yourself. And Chi Torpedo and Celerity are just uh, not as good as in comparison to Tiger's Lust. Next, you're going to want to run with Ascension. Uh, Energizing Elixir used to be your go-to in Legion, but it still only gives you two Chi, so you're going to want to run with Ascension. A lot of people think that... Um, Fist of the White Tiger is a good thing to run, but I'll tell you why it's not good. Uh, for one, it's on a 30 second cooldown. Two, it does the same damage as a Blackout Kick. And three, it only gives one more Chi and then a Tiger Palm. So you do get a lot more value out of going with Ascension. Next, it's always going to be Ring of Peace. Uh, for your next talent tree, you get the most utility out of running Ring of Peace. Tiger Tail Sweep and Good Karma aren't that good, uh, but there are some niche situations where Good Karma is actually viable. Uh, let's say if you're versing a sub rogue marksman hunter, uh, Good Karma is going to be a good option to pick there just because they can instantly kill you through your Karma. Next, uh, anytime you're versing a caster or another Windwalker, you always want to take Diffuse Magic. Uh, so if another Windwalker presses Karma on you, you can then burst through that Karma and diffuse all the Karma damage back on the Windwalker and just kill him right through his Karma. So here's a clip of me doing some viewer games on stream. So my priest is dead and I'm left in a 1v2 situation. So I just have to kill the priest. I kick his pendants into a full leg sweep and I will kill the priest here. And now it's just a 1v1 between me and the Windwalker. But I don't have Karma and he does. So I do my big burst damage, I channel my fist, and then he karmas into it. So I do my whirling dragon punch into that, I diffuse all the karma damage back onto him, and then I kill him. Dampen harm is okay versus uh, two melee, uh, more burstier melee, but inner strength is probably going to be the best thing to run, especially with the Kyrian Covenant. Having that extra 10% damage reduction the whole time you are doing damage is really good and you also have a lot of defensives to rotate and especially with that file uh that you get from your kirin covenant so having that 10 percent damage reduction the whole match is going to be really useful next you're going to want to run with dance of gg uh hit combo used to be the thing that you ran but with them adding dance of gg uh it's too good to pass up it increases your uh spinning cr crane kick damage by additional 200 percent uh, which is really good. It's uh, a lot better than hit combo. So unless Dance of Chi-G gets nerfed, you always want to run it. Alright, so a useful tip for maximizing your spinning crane kick damage. If you have enemies nearby, uh, when you do cast your Storm Earth and Fire, they will automatically jump to close enemies. So if you Storm Earth and Fire, you press Tiger Palm, you see my Spinning Crane Kick stacked up to three times. And as soon as you do that, you refixate, and then you can um, get an extra uh, 20 to 30% damage increase on your uh, Spinning Crane Kick on top of the 200% increase from Dance of GG for a lot of damage on your Spinning Crane Kick. 
And lastly, it is between Whirling Dragon Punch and Serenity. You can choose either depending on the situation, but I myself prefer using Whirling Dragon Punch. It's a lot more consistent damage and it feels very fluid to run on the Windwalker class, but there are some niche scenarios where you can run Serenity combined with the uh, Kyrian Covenant ability for a lot of bursts. But overall, Whirling Dragon Punch is the best thing to run. All right, so another good thing to keep in mind is um, not pressing your fist too early when you use your image. So if you if you image, fixate, and then fist, like at the same time, you see how um, my image, like one image wasn't properly fixated, but he did fist, but another image was fixated properly, um, but he didn't cast fist. All right, so a way to avoid this is when you do... Um, press your images what you want to be doing is you image you fixate you rising sun kick and then fist um rising sun kicking um when you fixate before you fist is really important because it'll um it'll jump your your spirits to the target to do the rising sun kick then they'll be in perfect position for you to then cast your fist this is especially important uh, in arenas because your targets will also be moving at the same time. So you do not want to be missing your fist. And it's just as important as uh, making sure your images are landing your fist as well as yourself. So pay close attention to where your images are and make sure they are fixated correctly. All right. So for PvP talents... Uh, you're going to have six options when it comes to PvP talents. Grapple Weapon, Reverse Harm, Turbo Fists, Ride the Wind, Tiger Eye Brew, and Alpha Tiger. So when you need to run these, uh, whenever you need Grapple Weapon, it's going to be versus Rogues, Warriors, DKs, Rets, Demon Hunters, and Marksman Hunters. You don't need to run Disarm versus Survival Hunters or BM Hunters because most of their damage doesn't rely on a weapon. Uh, survival... Hunters can't use Mongoose Bite while they're disarmed, but they have a lot of other abilities to press while they're disarmed, so you don't get much value in running it versus them. And you also don't need Disarm versus Feral Druids or other Windwalkers. And if you disarm another Windwalker, it only makes it so he can't use Fist of Fury for 6 seconds, and it doesn't cancel their Fist if they're already casting it, and they can still use every other ability while disarmed, so it doesn't do a lot. So instead, when you verse a Windwalker, a Survival Hunter, or a BM Hunter, or a Feral, you're going to want to run Alpha Tiger instead of that. And whenever you're versing any melee class, you're always going to be wanting to run Turbo Fist for the parry. And other than that, uh, you don't need versus, uh, Turbo Fist versus Casters or Marksman Hunters. And I tested Turbo Fists versus Marksman Hunters, and I wasn't able to parry any aim shots with it. So instead, when you don't need Turbo Fists, you can run Ride the Wind. Uh, and this will be your setup versus Rogues and Demon Hunters. This will be your setup versus Plate Melee. Uh, this is your setup versus Ferals and other Windwalkers. And this is your setup versus Casters. And uh, this will be your setup versus Warlocks. Tiger Ibrew is very effective versus Warlocks and their Demon ar Armor. And it can hit right through that. If you're versing a Caster and a Melee, uh, you're going to be wanting to run this. And if it if the melee is a Windwalker or a Feral, you're not going to need to take Grapple Weapon, and you can just run Alpha Tiger versus that. All right, so for a quick explanation on how you want to be using Tiger Eye Brew. So first of all, Tiger Eye Brew takes a global when you press it. So how to um, how to use it effectively? You want to be using it every Fist of Fury. It doesn't matter how many Tiger Eye Brew stacks you have. You can do it with two doesn't matter so every fist you press tiger eye brew so you fist and then you tiger eye brew mid fist so that'll that'll consume the global while you're uh, mid fist it'll apply the damage from tiger eye brew onto your fist and uh, you will save a global uh, for max efficiency not having to waste a global pressing tiger eye brew outside of fist so every fist just press tiger eye brew and uh, another useful tip for tiger eye brew is it turns your attack into a sort of wind attack so if you're versing any paladins uh, and they bop themselves or busting a protection themselves or their teammates if you have tiger eye brew active you can hit through that bop with all of your melee attacks so that's a very useful tip on how to use tiger eye brew so another quick tip that's useful to know is that your expel harm is on a shorter global cooldown than all your other abilities so if you watch me do two blackout kicks takes that much time 
watch me do an expel harm into a blackout kick, it is a lot faster. All right, so for moving on to macros uh, for 2v2 and 3v3 arenas, I have 18 different macros that I use. First, you're going to have a one, want to have uh, Arena 1, 2, 3 in caps. Uh, it's very good for just getting clean in caps off, not having to switch targets, not having to do anything. You can stay on your main target, and you can just get those in caps off whenever you need to, which is very nice to have. I definitely recommend you have these. Uh, I also have a uh, target arena one two three. It's good for quick and clean targeting, and it is very efficient uh, for me switching targets. Also, I have uh, party one, party two detox. This is going to be really important for cleansing, uh, DK diseases, hunter poisons, and especially devouring plagues from shadow priests. Uh, you're really going to want to be cleansing that off of yourself and your teammates, and this helps it cleanse it off your teammates a lot easier. So I also have. Party 1 and Party 2 Tiger's Lust. This is really good for getting your uh, allies out of sticky situations. You can give them a sprint so they can kite um, if uh, you don't need the mobility yourself. And also have Vivify 1 and 2 for healing your teammates. Uh, that can be handy sometimes without having to um, click on them and target. Uh, I personally don't like to click anything other than um, like Siphons and Totems that you have to kill, which you have to click. So this um, just eliminates... Uh, clicking your allies frames which is very like inefficient and also i have a focus kick you don't really need arena one two three kicks as a windwalker just because you um you don't have a ranged kick and um you just need like a normal kick and a focus kick and you should be set uh i also have a tiger macro which is like my tiger and my orc ratio you can also add a badge trinket in there too and uh so moving on to my tiger palm rising sun kick and black oak kick macros uh, I also have a Chi Wave macro too, with just my taunt. So my Tiger Palm macro, it's my Tiger Palm, my Pet Attack, my Tiger Leap, and Provoke. So first, I have my Pet Attack and Tiger Leap in here, uh, so I can control my Tiger and make sure it's attacking the same target that I am. So if I summon my Tiger, I press my Tiger Palm, then it will uh, automatically leap to the target. And if your Tiger Leap is off cooldown, I have the Pet Attack in there, so when I press my Tiger Palm, it'll start running there too. So my, ti my Tiger is always attacking the same target that I am. I also have that uh, in my Rising Sun Kick and Blackout Kick macro, so I have it in those three abilities. I also have my Taunt in here too. But the main reason I have it in here is um, one thing I like to do is uh, I like to ring a piece of rogues out of stealth. So... Um, if I do that, uh, and I get the Ring of Peace on a Rogue out of Stealth, it'll take him out of his Stealth, but it won't put him in combat. So if I do that, and the Rogue gets out of Stealth, but then uh, he's he's spamming his Restealth, sometimes he's able just to get the Restealth off, and then I get no value out of that Ring of Peace. But um, if I if I Ring of Peace him out of Stealth, and I'm pressing this with uh, with my Taunt, uh, macroed into there. Uh, taunt is off the global, so sometimes when you don't have that global to chi wave them to keep them in combat, uh, that taunt will do that as well. It is a shorter range, but uh, it is very uh, effective for keeping them in combat. Uh, so yeah, those are all the macros I have. Uh, they will all be linked in the description, and let's move on. Alright, so for the PvP add-ons that I use in Arena, I use Gladius, Omnibar, Big Debuffs, weak auras and details. Uh, so for Gladius, it helps me keep track of my stun and in-cap DRs, and I can also see enemy cast bars a lot easier. Omnibar is good for keeping track of other enemy CDs so you can counterplay. Uh, big debuffs makes debuffs on ally frames bigger so it's easier to see. Uh, weak auras you can customize uh, to track certain things on your screen. Details is a minor add-on, but it's useful to see yours and enemy damage and healing breakdowns. All will be in the description below. Alright, so here's a quick example of a video. It's uh, me playing with uh, some viewers on stream. And uh, here's why paying attention to your Gladius and your Omni Bar is really important and can help you in Arena. So I get the Rogue out of Stealth, and then I Chi Wave him, but he uses his Vanish, which is good. We get a free Vanish off of me ropping him out of Stealth. Then I go on the Warlock while the Rogue is still in Stealth. I Leg Sweep him. As soon as he opens, he blinds me. I Trinket that, in-cap him on his Shadow Dance. And as soon as I see him Trinket, I Disarm that Trinket right away. And it just allows me to go on the Lock, 
and um, finish out the game without the rogue really being able to do anything, seeing as he trained my in-cap, and then I instantly disarmed him on it. The covenant that is overall the best for Windwalker is the Kyrian Covenant with the Pelagos Soulbind Tree. Kyrian gives you the Weapons of Order ability that gives you a mastery increase and reduces the chi cost of your Rising Sun Kick by 1 and makes your Blackout Kick reduce the cooldown of Fist and Rising Sun Kick by an additional second for 30 seconds. And the Steward gives you a File of Serenity which is a 20% max HP heal and it removes all curses, diseases, poisons, and bleed effects. So these are the conduits I've chosen. I went for Tumbling Technique, Harm Denial, Coordinated Offensive, and Fortifying Ingredients. Uh, this uh, link to this uh, Soulbind calculator will be in the description below with all the uh, conduits filled out. So the reason I went for a Tumbling Technique instead of a uh, Potency Conduit is so that I can pick up File of Patience. This is a really good soul bind. It'll increase your file of Serenity's healing by an additional 35%, but it's the healing's going to be done over 10 seconds, which is fine. You'll get a 55% max health heal over 10 seconds, so you're getting 5.5% of your max health every second. Tumbling Technique is the best finesse conduit that you can run, giving Blackout Kick a 15% chance to grant a charge of roll. And then next is going to be Harm Denial. At max rank, Expel Harm's healing is going to be increased by 60%. So that is very important to have. And next is uh, Cleanse Vestments and Bond of Friendship. It doesn't really matter which one of these you choose to pick. These aren't very impactful in arena, and they don't actually do anything in the arena. So this is just you have a chance to obtain some cloth if you kill an enemy. And uh, this just reduces the cooldown of non-file services by 30 seconds. So these don't really do anything in the arena. And next is the coordinate offensive uh, potency conduit. This is the best potency condo that you can pick for Windwalker. The other ones are quite good, but Coordinated Offensive is the best one that you can take, uh, offering Serenity 21% uh, bonus damage, and if you're running Storm, Earth, and Fire, you will do a 21% increased damage when your spirits fixate on the same target. It's especially good with Storm, Earth, and Fire because you have two charges. And next is going to be Fortifying Ingredients. Your Fortifying Brew grants you a shield equal to 30% of your max health for 15 seconds. This is makes your Fortifying Brew a really strong defensive cooldown. Overall, this is the best Soulbind tree to run with the Escape from Reality Legendary. The legendary that I've chosen and deemed most useful in Arena is going to be Escape from Reality. With this legendary, you're able to cast Port another time, and after you port, your Vivify healing on yourself is increased by 70% and costs half the energy. This is very useful for surviving in Arena, especially 3v3 and cutting out long CC chains on your healer and topping yourself with Vivify without having to use your Karma, Diffuse Magic, or your Fortifying Brew. The port legendary is very useful for kiting, especially on small maps like Hook Point. So here, I'm able to port between the pillars with ease. I can then wait out the stun duration on me, and then port back without losing any HP. So, the port legendary is very useful in that scenario, but just imagine that you're in a threes match and your healer is in a long CC chain. Example, full trap into a hammer of justice. So there I was able to kite the hunter and heal up and I'm able to save my defensive cooldowns like my karma and my fort brew by just using port and casting vivify. Then I'm in a 1v2 situation so I immediately serpent kick away and then port the warrior's charge. I then heal up to full and as soon as they're about to reconnect to me I use the effect of my port legendary to port back across the map from them. So here I made a huge gap from the warrior and the demon hunter and then I'm able to summon all of my pets and then kill the demon hunter in a full leg sweep. And if you're wondering why I'm the Venthyr Covenant here, it's just me testing a bunch of stuff on beta. Uh, so I killed the demon hunter and because I kited with the help of my poor legendary, I was able to save my karma to then 1v1 the warrior. Alright, so here's an example of another use for your port legendary. So here, I'm in a 1v1 situation versus a feral He's running away from me. So he puts me into a root, I diffuse the root back off, and I chase him. And I notice he's going to the pillar, so I use my port to port right on top of him. I do some damage into him, and then he starts to run. I start casting some vivifies, and then I'm able to port right back on top of him. 
so I can um, catch up to him and land that leg sweep. So this puts me at a massive advantage because I'm able to land that leg sweep without using too much of my mobility and I still have a charge of roll. I then karma the thorns and then I go to town on the feral and uh, land the kill. All right, so now that you're all set up uh, to enter the arena, let's get into some gameplay mechanics of Windwalker. A common mistake a lot of Windwalkers make is tanking a lot of damage and not kiting before pressing Karma. You need to avoid as much damage as possible because Windwalkers are squishy. You always want to try to kite out the CC chains on your healer and only press Karma if you run out of mobility and you can't... Uh, avoid the damage. Here's a good example of pre-ropping myself on the opener to survive in here. It allows me to save my trinket and not have to blow it in the opener. So as soon as I get out of the stun, I'm going to reverse harm and wall myself, and then I'm going to roll away. And as soon as the rogue and the rep pally get into my line, I'm going to make sure to cross CC them with an in-cap on the ret and a disarm on the rogue. The rogue then duels me, and then he trinkets my disarm on which I sweep him on his trinket, and I lay a lot of damage into him. So as I come out of the duel, I see a rep pally with wings is right next to me. So I'm going to roll away and try to kite that out. So he hodges my healer full, which I'm going to then port across the map and then kite, use my reverse harm to heal, reset my port. And then, so here I've ran out of mobility. I just got hit for a really big Templars for a lot of health and the rogues popping shadow blades as i can see on my omni bar so i have no choice but to karma so i'm forced to karma there but uh because i still save my trinket from ropping myself in the opener when the red pally does bop my karma off in a cheap shot bomb i'm able just to trinket and roll out of the bomb unfortunately my healer did link me uh, when I did do that, it probably wasn't necessary, but I'm just running some viewer games, so that is okay. I'm not really relying on any of my healers' cooldowns to survive. I'm just rotating my cooldowns and kiting. So after the bop and evasion fade, I'm able just to brawl it out with the ret pally and the rogue, and then I can do damage without really having fear of dying. My shaman pops ascendance. I get a nice heal right as I'm, uh, Flying Serpent kicking away, and then I am just able to finish out the rogue and then win the game. Alright, and here's a quick example of how you, when you channel your fist or a spinning crane kick, you just want to be spamming your touch of death because um, you have that free global and it can allow you to land kills. So here, I get the kick on the pally, he's quite low, and then I start my Fist of Fury, and I'm just sitting there spamming my Touch of Death as he's getting into range, and as soon as he gets into range, I have that free global, and I Touch of Death him for the win. Alright, so here I'm playing with the viewer. Uh, this is an example of me ropping the rogue out of stealth. So, I go in, I'm spinning crane kicking, trying to get him out of stealth, but when I realize that my monk gets sapped, I rot myself, I get him out of stealth, and then I disarm him before he can stun me, so then he trinkets to cheap shot me, in which I trinket leg sweep him with no trinket, and then I burst him down in the leg sweep. Alright, so here's another clip of me doing the pre rop out of stealth, and being able to save my trinket versus the burst. So here, I set my port down. And I try to spin and crank the rogue out of stealth. He saps me. He swaps to my shaman. And as soon as he does that, I rot myself. I'm able to save my trinket. I port away. And I can kite. And once the uh, reds bubbles down, it is the best time to use my karma. So he cannot bop my karma off. So another great thing to do as one walker is to actively try to get a rogue out of stealth before he can open on you. So one good thing to do is um, spinning crane kick right before you roll and then you can like roll with an AoE. Your spinning crane kick will not cancel and uh, you can get rogues out of stealth with it. So in this clip, uh, I set my port down, I press expel harm and then I spinning crane kick roll, I get the rogue out. So then I instantly disarm him, and then it allows me to kite the opener without getting stunned. I rop him away from me. My healer gets root beams, and I'm able to instantly tiger's list him. And if you spin in crane kick or rop a feral out of stealth, then he can't use his rage stun on you. And it also works versus resto druids that are feral affinity. If you rop them out of stealth, they are unable to get the rage stun.
A really good thing to keep in mind as Windwalker is always remember where you set your port. So see, I have the rogue low here. He uh, cheat deaths and then he blinds me to run away, but he runs right on top of my port. So I uh, I reverse arm for Chi. I pour on top of him, get him out with a spinning crane kick, and then I uh, finish him off. When you go for a leg sweep, you always want to try to get a double leg sweep. Sometimes they won't be close enough to get a double, but Ring of Peace can give you a little bit of extra distance so you can rop them into a double sweep. Drop into a double sweep here. Especially if you're in a twos match versus a melee DPS and they are attacking you, you can always group them up on top of the healer to land your leg sweep and get a double. One thing that's really good to do as Windwalker is to ring a piece of the Priest's Barrier. So as soon as you see Priest do Barrier, if you rop right in the center, it will uh, it'll boot them out of it and uh, they cannot uh, re-enter. It is also very useful to use your ring of peace on top of Demon Hunter Darkness, same as a Priest Barrier, so he cannot enter or get any benefit out of their darkness. So here are just a few quick clips of me ropping some rogues out of stealth. Whenever you are able to get that rop on the rogue out of stealth, it really swings the opener in your favor. So as you can see here, I rop this rogue out of stealth, I chi wave him, I roll back, and I get the disarm on the shadow blades in which my lot coils him at the same time. But then he trinkets that into a full leg sweep, and then we close out the kill. Alright, so a really useful thing to do on Windwalker is the pre-rop. So whenever you're versing a rogue, it's really useful if you're able to rop them out of stealth. So whenever you get sapped, um, generally they're going to go on your partner, but if they swap the sap to your partner after you've already been sapped, then just know that the rogue's going to be running at you for a stun. So he saps me. As soon as I see him swap it to my shaman, I port, rop on top of myself, I incap him, and he trinkets my incap, so then I trinket sweep him, and then I'm able to instantly defuse the claw. So that really um, throws off their opener in my favor. All right, and because this was versus Grayson, we are able to see his point of view on what happened. Alright, so because I had such a good opener, uh, I was able to save my karma and my wall for when it really mattered. So when my shaman gets uh, silence here, I'm able to uh, press my karma and my wall uh, without him having to trinket uh, the blind or uh, link me or use his earthen on me. I can just rotate through my own defensives and then go on to win the game. Like if you should you steal poly, you should have to you should steal it to use poly, not to like just. guy full HP? That's gonna be. Yeah, like, like Sim, just, or maybe make it, I don't know. Like, you're not gonna steal fear from Warlocks to, like... How? Was like, he full HP? Than, I think, in a lot of Fuck! Not gonna steal if you enjoyed the video, I stream live at twitch.tv slash zugzogtv. Link will be in the description. It would mean a lot to go follow my Twitch and say hello. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Don't forget to fist that like button.